Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about what happened when I reread my favourite YA series from when I was actually a teenager. So, what amazing YA series is this that you so dearly talk about? Well, it is the Delirium Trilogy by Lauren Oliver. <laughs> Okay, huge spoiler warning. This video will be going into incredible detail of the plot, the characters, the adaptation, everything about the Delirium franchise. So if you haven't read the books, please don't watch this video. Please go read the books before you do. I'm sure I will say this throughout this video, but these books are just incredible and you have to read them without any spoilers. Please, please, please don't spoil it for yourself. <laughs> Okay, spoiler over, I'm presuming that you guys have read the books or seen the adaptation and you are okay to stay. So, a brief recap, a brief synopsis about the trilogy itself. In the Delirium universe, love is a disease and when you turn 18, you get a cure which removes your emotions and stops you falling in love. In a nutshell, the trilogy follows the protagonist, Lena Haloway, who actually falls in love before she gets cured at 18 years old and what happens after. It's a dystopia, there's a love triangle, there's action, there's badass it's just incredible and I'm so so happy that you guys have read these books as well and hopefully enjoyed them as much as I have. As the video title suggests I used to be obsessed with this trilogy. Going back to 16 year old Tilly and in 2014 I actually emailed Lauren Oliver herself professing my love for the Delirium trilogy and just saying how much her books had impacted me as a person. Now I'm probably going to regret this but I'm actually going to share with you guys a tiny extract of probably the most cringy and embarrassing email I have ever written in my life and also definitely the most embarrassing email that Lauren Oliver has also ever received. Okay, are you guys ready for this? To Lauren Oliver, I don't know how to start an email about writing how your books have impacted me. I suppose it's a bit cliched writing to an author whose books have changed your literature mind. Ugh. But I'd like you to know that you were the first author I've written to and I know it's a bit the fault in our stars but the Delirium series really has hit a nerve. Honestly, I can't tell you what I meant to say here. I first read Delirium earlier this year and immediately I clicked with Lena. Okay, I know that sounds like every other fan mail you get, but seriously, I really connected with her character. I quickly finished the book and read Pandemonium and Requiem. Let's just say your books are the most highlighted, quote-wise, on my Kindle. But something else was bugging me. I didn't realise why your books had affected me so much until I started to reread them last month. It hit me. I am Lena. Please keep reading. I swear I'm not that dramatic. The actions and thoughts that she has are exactly mine and I I found myself using the books as looking at another version of me. I then go to talk about the fact that I'm studying for my GCSEs at that point and how instead of revising I was actually up emailing her, which is just rogue on my behalf. Who knew 2014 Tilly just like completely flunked her exams to write fan mail? But yeah, that's basically the email that I wrote to Lauren Oliver in 2014. So I think it's safe to say I was a massive, massive fan of her books. If you guys have seen my most recent video about my secondhand bookshop haul, you will remember that I found the Delirium series half on Depop and half in a second-hand charity shop. Anyway, as soon as book one arrived, I sat down and I read six chapters in one go. No break, start to finish, six chapters, bang, 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 out the way. I was hooked like I was in 2014 all over again. The first thing I wrote down, because yes, I did write down notes when I reread this series, is how different Lena's character development is to how I first remembered it. Before I started rereading Delirium, I was thinking about Lena's character and I remembered her as being just super super badass, super confident, super self-assured and just super like fuck you, get out of my way, this is what I want to do with my life. I had literally forgotten in the first half of Delirium she's super super shy, she's super quiet, she's super nervous and she doubts herself all the time. I think one of the reasons I resonated with Lena's character so much when I was a teenager is because I did have a couple of years when I was like really unsure of myself, sort of like quite quiet with people that I didn't really really know but then really loud with people that I did know and I was just a bit like unsure about everything. However, during the time that I first read this series, I remember I like grew into myself, I became a lot more confident, I knew who I was and I started just to stand up for everything and not give a fuck about what people thought. So I think I identified with Lena's development through the series and maybe this is why I was so convinced that I myself was Lena Haloway in the flesh. Alex sheaths and all my emotions came right back around again. Hand on heart, 
are Alex was my first literary crush. I don't know about you guys, but I was just in awe of him when I was younger. I fancied him so, so much. Rereading Alex and Lena's first kiss. Oh my God, when I was younger and I first read this scene, I thought it was the most romantic thing. And I won't lie to you, I still think it is. They have just escaped from the raid. They are hiding in that tiny greenhouse. Alex is helping to heal Lena's leg because she got bit by the dog. He's obviously topless because he took his top off to use as some sort of bandage to help her. She knows she notices how close he is, she feels the heat from his body, he notices that she notices, she says that she's scared, she doesn't know what this feels like, why she feels like this, he then says, let me show you, and I swear, I just shut the book. I blame my super, super unrealistic expectations of men on Jem Carstairs and Alex Sheaths. Then we have the final scene of Delirium. When I tell you I'd forgotten about this, I mean I had forgotten about this. I'd forgotten about the pain, I'd forgotten about the imagery, the emotions, everything. I must have compartmentalized it in like a part of my brain just labeled pain. And rereading this bit, that section opened and my feelings came back tenfold. Lena escaping from the house and jumping on a motorbike with Alex, then riding through the streets, the guards, the helicopter, the rush to the fence, Lena trying to climb the fence, looking back, and Alex is still on the other side, and then boom, the guards get him, Alex goes down, Lena runs, and the last thing she sees is the love of her life falling to the floor, covered in blood. I was a mess then, and I'm a mess now. Book two, pandemonium. And I'd forgotten that half the book is Lena's life in the wilds, how she's adjusting to this new lifestyle and just like pure raw emotion and upheaval. I had also forgotten that this book then flips between the then and the now, the then being in the wild straight after her escape and the now weirdly being in New York City. She has a scar, she's back in class and she seems like she's back to normal. However, don't be fooled, she's still undercover. I know the first time I read Pandemonium when I was 16, I was equally as confused by this scene and I was again when I reread it now. You have that brief moment when you're like, why is Lena back on the other side in Zombieland? Did she go and hand herself in? Did she go get cured? Bam! No, the scar is fake, it's a fake scar and you find that out later in the book as well. Such a good plot twist! Raven! Oh my god, when I first saw Raven's name, it all came back to me. Who Raven was, what she does and what happens to her in the end. But I will save that for my analysis of Requiem. And then we meet Julian for the first time and I have so many thoughts on Julian that I'm going to share with you in this video. But my first thought was, he's blonde? Why did I remember Julian as having dark hair? And then I realised, I don't know if you guys know this, but there was actually an adaptation of Delirium. There was a pilot episode. I think they were trying to make it into a TV series, but the pilot flopped and they never released it. I remember finding this pilot, this short adaptation on YouTube when I first finished reading it. And honestly, I hated it so much. Part of the reason why I think I hated this adaptation so much is who they cast as the three main characters. So they cast Emma Roberts as Lena. They cast Greg Sulkin as Julian and they cast Darren Kagasoff as Alex. I'm sorry, but this is just all shades of wrong. I won't spend too long on this, but I remember after I reread Lena's first introduction to Julian, I went online, I looked at some fan casts, and this is who I decided I liked the most so far. For Alex, either Daniel Sharman or Brendan Thwaites. For Lena, Daniel Campbell. I love Emma Roberts so, so much, but for me, she just isn't Lena. And for Julian, Lucas Till, a bonus casting, Ansel Elgort as Fred Hargrove. Fred is a complete, utter dick, but he's also not one of the main three. However, when I saw that someone had cast Ansel Elgort as Fred, I was like, bang on, that's it, 100% gold star. That's exactly what Fred looks like. Anyway, back to Pandemonium, the book. I remember when I was younger, I used to hate the layout of Pandemonium, the then and the now, because I just wanted to know what happened after Delirium. I wanted just the whole of the then and nothing of the now. I wasn't interested in this new Lena who seemed cured. She seemed like she was okay with everything. She seemed totally at ease with her new life. And I was really confused why the hell she was in New York as well. Anyway, then suddenly Lena is kidnapped with Julian by the scavengers. And then you go back to the then part and you think, actually, 
I don't want to go back to the then. I want to stay in the now. You go back to the then and it's hardship, but it's like everyday hardship. It's quite repetitive. Then suddenly there is a bombing. Lena goes to check for messages. The birds have painted the tree red. It looks like blood. And then the bombs come from the sky. And then it goes back to the now when she's kidnapped. And you just think there's chaos in both sides of the timeline. I cannot put this book down. This is the best book ever, but also the most horrific book ever. When will Lena ever get a break? look what happened then look what's happening now how does she do it lena's relationship with julian i remember when i was younger i tried so so hard to hate julian because i loved alex so so much but like it did then when i reread pandemonium and lena's feelings started to develop for julian i fell in love with julian Feynman once again being an older reader i was able to notice parallels between lena and alex's relationship and lena and julian's relationship lena becomes to Julian what Alex was to her. Julian is this uncured who's super super nervy of the invalid and is really scared of falling in love but knows deep down inside that it could happen to him. Backtracked to Delirium, this is exactly how Lena felt and in Delirium Alex was this invalid who wasn't afraid of his feelings and showed Lena her true side. Flash forward to Pandemonium, Lena is now this invalid who isn't afraid of love, who isn't afraid of the damages of love, the risk of it, so she sort of plays the part that Alex played to her but to Julian instead. Honestly I love the dynamic between these two and when Julian reaches out and touches Lena's hair in the dark my heart it just it just crumbled. When it's revealed it was actually Raven and Tack that set up Lena's kidnapping and that essentially they were kind of safe the whole way through because Tack and Raven were watching them. Again another plot twist I didn't remember and I was surprised again. It gave me big Hunger Games vibes especially in Catching Fire when Peter and Katniss don't know the rebels plans and they go into the court of quail and they think everything's normal they're trying to save each other but the other tributes like Finnick and Joanna actually know BT and the rebels plans. However, Peter and Katniss are none the wiser. This section of Pandemonium really reminded me of this section of Catch and Fire. And last but not least, Alex's return. I knew he came back. I remembered that he came back. I did not remember how he came back. Julian and Lena finally escape with Raven and Tack. Raven and Tack go inside to the homestead. They are outside by the van talking to each other. They are so happy that they are free. Lena is thinking about this amazing life she has with Julian. No restraints. They can love each other in the open. It's so, so great. Julian leans down to kiss her. They kiss and he says, please never leave me she says I won't and then you hear a voice that says don't believe anything she says. Lena turns around and it's Alex. Honestly, no one does cliffhangers like Lauren Oliver. So when you finally pick up Requiem, you are a complete and utter mess. Alex ignoring Lena for the first two weeks when he joins the group. I was pissed when I was younger. I am pissed again now. How dare he? And why doesn't Lena react more? I would have gone over to him. I would have shaken him and screamed at him. What the hell are you playing at? But no, weirdly, she was quite calm with it. It. she was quite respectful of the situation she noticed that Alex wasn't looking at her that he seemed quite broken and she felt for Julian because she didn't want to bring Julian into this mess I understood Lena I felt for Lena but I lost it when she called Alex the boy I loved better are you kidding me Lena similar to the then and the now layout of pandemonium I remember when I was younger I really didn't like the Hannah versus Lena layout of Requiem however now I'm older and hopefully some would say wiser I now appreciate this plot device immensely. As a reader, not only are you able to see the differences between cured Hannah and uncured Lena, but you can also see the differences between uncured Hannah and cured Hannah. Tiny little details like when Hannah is describing Fred, she describes him really objectively. It's like she's stating facts. She says things like he has a dimple, which is literally just like pointing out things. Whereas when Lena describes the boys that she's in love with, she uses a lot more emotions and descriptions like Alex's unruly, messy auburn hair, the colour of autumn leaves. She uses similes, she uses metaphors, whereas for Hannah, it's very direct, very to the point and very like fact stating. Another thing I picked up on when I reread Requiem are some of the amazing parallels in this series. The first parallel I want to talk about is when Lena looks at Alex and when Lena looks at Julian and she says the same thing. She says, I think he's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. So Lena says this about Alex at the end of Delirium 
Miriam when she turns around and sees Alex has actually sacrificed himself. He is covered in blood and the regulators are jumping down on him. Flip reverse, Lena says it's about Julian when she comes out of the tent one morning and she finds her mother and Julian sat around the fire, stoking the fire in the early morning. Julian turns to her and gives her this huge, huge smile. He says, morning beauty. And she notices the blueness of his eyes and then she says that that is the most beautiful thing she's ever seen. Second parallel is when Lena and Julian are climbing the Portland wall and they're climbing on the ropes the invalids that have got inside Portland have sent back over. Lena is basically swinging on this rope and freaks out and Julian calls from behind her, go Lena go. If you remember that back in Delirium in Alex's and Lena's escape, when Alex said to Lena, you need to crash this motorbike into the wall, the power's gonna go and then you need to escape over the wall and I will be right behind you. She does it, she gets to the wall, she starts to climb, she doesn't look around and Alex says, go Lena go. The reason this parallel is just so beautiful is because in Delirium, Lena is escaping Portland, she's going over the other side of the fence into the wilds, but in Requiem, she's actually going from the wilds back into Portland. It is an amazing parallel and it's just so, so gorgeously written. So in this final attack and the scaling of the wall, it is just horrific. It is so, so brutal. And I don't think when I was younger, I appreciated the actual brutality and the carnage of this scene. 16 year old me saw Raven die and was like, oh my God, Raven's dead. But 22 year old me appreciates the horrific sacrifice that Raven did, all the other people that died, the regulator that got shot, everyone. Like it was just a total mess. There's one thing I can compare it to and I don't know if you guys agree, but back to the Hunger Games and in particular Mockingjay, when you find out about the rebellion in District 13, it's really hard to picture just like the scale of the whole thing. And I remember reading the books, I was just convinced that it was quite like a small rebellion. And in the end, I was really surprised why this small group managed to actually overthrow the whole capital. However, one thing that I think Mockingjay part one, the film does really well. There's the montage and they put the hanging tree song over it and it shows some of the rebels in the district running towards the dam, blowing it all up and causing like mass destruction. And then you realize just the scale of this rebellion and how big it really is. So rereading the book now when I'm older, it really threw me back to when I watched this film for the first time and I could really appreciate the grand scale of the whole rebellion. The last thing I wanna talk about before I talk about the ending of Requiem is the amazing moment when Lena and Hannah finally meet. It's such a great moment because obviously you're reading from Lena's perspective and from Hannah's perspective, but they're about totally different events and as engaging and interesting as they are, there's something about reading the same event through two different people's perspectives that's just amazing. Ultimately, the section then leads to Lena telling Hannah that there's actually a bomb planted at the bottom of this house. Hannah then tells Fred to stay in the house. She bolts and she doesn't look back. Go, Hannah. So, the ending of Requiem. Going back to 16 year old me, I extremely disliked this ending. I thought it was way too open-ended. There was no finality to it. There was no conclusive evidence that Lena chose Alex and I really wanted to see that. However, older Tilly is a lot more accepting of this ending. Lauren Oliver has since come out and said that she left the ending intentionally open for interpretation for people to write what happens next and for people to really think about in their heads what they think they'd like to happen to these characters. Rereading this ending, I do think you get enough to sort of work out what happens next or even in what sort of vague direction it goes in. Things like Alex and Lena promising that they will never leave each other again. Grace being reunited with Lena sort of gives the vibes that Grace is there to stay now and that Lena will protect her. Even the imagery of shirtless Julian gives you the idea that the future of this world will be a lot more tolerant because Julian, obviously the son of the former DFA leader, is now able to walk around topless, be free and liberate himself as an uncured. I think this gives you like a big hint that hopefully in the future things will be a lot better. However, if you guys are still of the opinion of 16 year old me and you wanted something a bit more conclusive, I have found two great fan fiction endings that I will leave in the description for you guys. But yes, older Tilly was able to appreciate the open-endedness of this ending a lot more than she did when she was younger. Okay, some more mature final thoughts on Lena's relationships with Alex and Julian. After rereading these books, I now think I understand her relationship with these boys a lot better. For me, Alex was like a lover 
love at first sight, incredibly intense and sort of all over the place, like a crazy sort of love. Whereas Julian was one that grew on her. It wasn't so intense so quickly, but in the end, this deeper connection perhaps grew even more intense than Alex's was with her. So even though I think Julian is better for Lena than Alex is, it is the world and the point of the world is that you are free to choose who you love. So really, we can't actually hold this against Lena that much. So why does Lena love Alex more? Well, upon rereading, I think I know why. For me, Alex showed Lena her true self and what was already living inside Lena in a more artistic way. Alex showed Lena her future, but then sadly became her past. However, Julian reminded Lena too much of her past to become her future. <laughs> you can tell I studied English Lit, can't you? Okay, to conclude, it was so great rereading this series once more. I noticed so many little things that I didn't notice when I was 16, and it was so much fun to reread these characters with fresh and hopefully more mature eyes. Obviously, I would highly recommend both rereading the Delirium trilogy and also rereading your own favourite YA trilogy from when you were younger. For me, it's like finding a super old sweater that you haven't worn for ages, but still fits and it's still snuggly and it's still nice and toasty warm. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed and remember to subscribe if you haven't already. And please also tell me what your favourite YA series or just favourite book series was when you were younger. Big shout out to Lauren Oliver, a seriously underappreciated author whose Delirium trilogy is so, so so underrated. I speak on behalf of all those Delirium fans that I know are out there. We are so, so grateful for bringing Lena into our lives.